Hello, Becca. Uh, it is Hello. time. <laughs> it's time for another recommends show. And this one is honestly packed, so we best get going. It is indeed. Coming up on today's show, we've got a whopping 15 products to tell you all about, ranging from some carb packed energy gels to the new Dura Race group set and also a brilliant e bike. There is also um, a cafe to talk about. We've got a lovely ride around Spain. Not the whole thing, obviously. Uh, that's for you to try out when you go out there. And we'll also be looking at some buying advice for winter gloves. That one's timely because it is freezing out there and it's probably going to be freezing forever now. It certainly Feels is like very, it. very cold today. Best get going though. First up is the Science and Sport Beta Fuel Gel. These pack 40 grams of carbs into each gel, which is roughly 40 to 50% more carbs than usual. Uh, the ratio of 1 to 0.8 maltodextrin, maltodextrin if I can say it correctly, <laughs> to fructose is where these really shine. It allows you to pair a gel with another product from the Beta fuel range to take on up to 120 grams of carbs per hour. I have to say that is a serious amount of fuel and I've also been using these gels for demanding training sessions and races. They're tasty enough and I have to say that I've had no stomach issues uh, when pushing the carb intake to the limit. Thanks for that update Liam, good That's to know. Um, are you training with them full time? No, I think they are a little bit expensive for that. You could if you've got the money. Uh, they are, I have to say, my go-to with the Beta Fuel drink and the uh, Beta Fuel chews come race day. Now, next up is the All City Gorilla Monsoon. This gravel bike really blurs the line between gravel rig and rigid mountain bike with huge tire clearance and bolts for guards and racks. This is a machine that can do a bit of anything from rough commute to touring the world. Strip it back though, and it's a fun bike to ride, whether that be exploring your local byways or tackling a bit of single track in the local woods. Well, All City have created a clever balance here with a bike that is stable and trustworthy when laden, but still fun to ride. And should you head out of the door with nothing but your jersey pockets carrying your spares, then you can have a right blast on some pretty unforgiving terrain. I have to say, on the climbs, the 34 by 42 tooth uh, bailout gear, that should see you be able to crest the hill without having to put in too much effort. And that is where the fun really begins. It's on these downhills where the heft actually becomes a benefit. So the Gorilla feels super planted and that's thanks to massive volume from the 2.4 inch wide tires. You can just let it fly on the descent, mostly thanks to the low pressures that you can run them at. And it looks absolutely gorgeous as yeah, well. Yeah, we're a big fan of this one. Well, we can't look at pics of bikes all day, sadly. Um, there's too much to fit in today. The BBB T-Rex grip is an easy to use alternative to a chain whip. Now, if you remove a lot of cassettes, for example, then this is just an easier way to grip the cassette. It is about a tenner more than your usual kind of chain whip. But in our testing, we found the practicality of the tool more than outweighed the extra cost. Well, essentially, if you want to make changing cassettes a little bit easier, then it is worth the cash, I'd say. Yeah, I would say so also. Uh, moving on to a product that I'm happy to pay for each year, you know, with actual money. Uh, training Peaks Premium is an excellent piece of software that helps you to track training aiding you in the build up to events and allowing you to plan peaks in your season. This isn't really something that you'd use just for fun. It's mm. more about performance and many riders use training peaks to receive workouts from their coaches, for example. Uh, you get loads and loads of metrics to take a deep dive into and it is very easy to track training load, fatigue and fitness progression. So as with any tool, you'll still need to do the hard work to get better, very sadly. But training peaks does make it easier to know what exactly that right work is and what it looks like. Yeah, I used the software in the run up to hill climb season and combine that with some very grim sessions from Liam Hollahan. I still hate you, Liam. Uh, I managed to improve my FTP by 5% and my four minute power went up by a whopping 15%. It's impressive. You haven't mentioned it. I, I haven't mentioned it, I promise. Uh, oh, and there is a top tip. If you are a British Cycling member, you can get your um, Training Peaks subscription at a discounted rate. Uh, you just go to your member benefits page on the website to get your code. 
Now that you've done all, all of that specific training, I reckon it's easy. time for a, a slice of cake. <laughs> yeah, you've got, you've got the games. <laughs> um, should we go and have some cake? Yeah, I'm in for I, this I, bit. I, I really want some cake. Our cafe for this month is pretty much unmissable if you ever find yourself on the A616 outside Sheffield. Bankview Cafe got its polka dot makeover when the Tour de France went through in 2014 and it's kept the spots ever since. The whole area is full of great riding. There's any number of great road loops, plenty of mountain biking and you're only a mile from the Trans Pennine Trail. If you're feeling brave, you could tackle the Tour of the Strines, which manages to pack nearly two and a half thousand metres of climbing into a 54 kilometre loop. The cafe will serve you up anything from a coffee and a slice of homemade cake to a fry up to a full lunch if you're on an all dayer. There are plenty of veggie and vegan options, and it's all pretty good value as well. In 2019, Bankview Cafe received a well deserved Lifetime Achievement Award from Cycling UK, so we're definitely not the first to recommend it. If you're riding in the area, make sure you pop in for a brew. Oh, well, that looked absolutely lovely, but given the yeah. weather, you might want to go there sporting a pair of Monton Pro Sutu Merino socks, for example. I have to, have to say, <laughs> I want some cake now. Um, <laughs> now, once we're done with the show, I think, mm. shall we go and find yeah, out? Definitely. Enough about cake. Um, these socks. Surely they're perfect for cold winter days. Yeah, the attention to detail here is really impressive. The Pro Sutu socks come as a right and left specific pair, and so they're shaped um, to hug the contours of each foot closely. That seems to really help with warmth because there aren't any gaps or voids for cold air to get in at your foot. So as you might expect, these are a little bulkier than summer socks. Uh, that means that they work best with shoes that have a bit more room than your warm weather racing slippers. And we'd also recommend upping the size of the socks that you buy. Yeah, they're also on a permanent discount. So at only 12 quid, they're really good value as well. Moving on now, the No Pins Pro 1 bib shorts really impressed us with, well, impressive performance, a great fit and a chamois that's really comfy for those long distance rides. The uh, shorts are made with No Pins' proprietary Speed Skills fabric, which it claims offers outstanding aero performance with the surface designed to reduce the amount of drag produced by the air passing around the leg. Now, obviously we can't test that because we don't have a wind tunnel, but the shorts are at least well made and we really like the understated design as well. However, if you are short, like us, yeah. then you will have to like your bib shorts to be rather long in the leg. But the gripper on the hem does do a great job of keeping the shorts in place so that that length isn't irritating. Now, Becca, if they're even shorter than we are, which is, is, is hard possible? to do, um, you might want to take a look at the Hornet Aero Balance Bike. Just look at how cool this thing is. I am brilliant. It is, I'm loving the wheels, but I have a question. Why can't they design adult bikes like this? Yes. I want those wheels. Um, it's getting back to serious points. It's also decently light, which obviously helps when you're dinky and it's really easy to set up. So you won't have to spend like all of Christmas Eve or Christmas day putting it together. The only downside I can see is the lack of a quick release seat post for when, of course, they've grown by Boxing Day. Uh, but that is an easy fix and a lifetime warranty more than makes up for that. And it's really fun to ride too. Are you? Uh, <laughs> apparently. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, if you've already progressed up through the ranks of learning to pedal, then Strava Premium is a purchase that means that you can spend even more time focusing on your cycling. Well, I think we're both guilty of getting back from a ride and nerding out over all the data. And with Strava, there's all sorts of graph segments and comparisons to look at, hours of fun. So Strava Premium subscription also has the benefit of the social aspect. You can kudos rides from your workmates, the pros, or even like Boris Johnson, if you wanted to. Uh, keep an eye on how your fitness is building, or in my place, declining right now. You can set targets on specific segments, and you can also send them across to certain cycle computers for that added bit of motivation out on the road. I definitely need that at the mm. moment. Uh, for planning regimented training, then there's probably better options out there, but for reviewing rides and staying motivated, as I say, then it is great value, but not quite as good value as when it was free a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, you've got to pay for that thing now. Um, anyway, one of my favorite features of the Strava Premium subscription is the Root Builder. And speaking of routes, we've got a brilliant one to show you. This month, it comes from Spain, where Dave was out sunning himself and not making us jealous at all. Not at all. 
Okay, something a bit different this month. We're heading down to southern Spain and the picturesque climb of the Carretera de la Cabra, or the Goat Path, which heads into the hills from the coastal town of Almunieca, about an hour east of Malaga. When you think of early or late season bike holidays, you might think of Mallorca or Tenerife, but the Alpujarras region of Spain rivals them in every respect. The roads are perfectly surfaced and almost empty from late autumn to spring. There's masses of gravel riding too, if that's your thing. The region is chock full of climbs, but the Carretera de la Cabra, which is the old road over the mountains to Granada, is the jewel in the crown. Rising from sea level to over 1300 metres, it leaves the urban sprawl of the coast quickly, and after the towns of Jete and Otiba, it's just you and the road as it winds through the arid mountains. There are stunning views back towards the coast as you climb, and the road is never steep on its journey to the summit. From the beach to the top, it's a little over 40 kilometers, although it's definitely worth stopping at the Maison de las Prados restaurant just before the summit for a huge plate of local fare. From the mountains, there are options to make a loop to the east or the west, which will take the total distance well over 100 kilometers. But the Carretera de la Cabra is every bit as fun going down as it is spectacular going up. There's very little traffic, sight lines are good, and the views are magnificent. The whole area is well worth a visit, but if you go, make sure this climb is top of your list. Of course, any route uh, feels better. I'm not even going to acknowledge Dave there. Uh, of course, it feels better when you're rolling on some fresh rubber and we might just have the thing for you with the CST Sito tyres. These really impressed us, not just with their performance, but also with their value. And although you might not have heard of CST before, they happen to be the largest tyre manufacturer in the world. So the chances are you've actually used something of theirs, just maybe under a different name. I have to say you learn something every yeah, day, you don't do. you? Um, despite the price being half as much as what you could spend on top end tyres, these still ride smoothly, they grip well and result in a comfortable ride. Um, these certainly are worth considering over better known rivals, but aren't suitable, I'm afraid, for tubeless lovers. Meh. We can, we can take that or leave it really here. Um, if commuting is your thing, then check out this Vitus DVR City bike. Uh, it's excellent for sprints between traffic lights and avoiding buses, thanks to its stiff aluminium frame. The three-speed hub gearing did mean that here in Bath we were getting home a little red in the face, but that was still an improvement over a fixed gear. Um, and on the way back down, the hydraulic Shimano disc brakes come in rather handy and aren't always found on bikes of this price. But don't you find yourself getting uh, numb fingers barreling down those hills on the way in? Especially, uh, well, over the last few weeks. Well. I'm freezing. It sounds like you haven't been using the ASOS Winter Gloves. As with most ASOS kit, they don't come cheap, but they are a seriously high quality product that are usable down to freezing. I'm a big fan. That's great. My main issue with these is their name. Who came up with ASOSeries? I love it, writes itself. It doesn't really roll off the tongue. Uh, anyway, despite that. The gloves are excellent. They're windproof, they provide a great fit, and you can actually use your phone or touchscreen cycle computer in them. It makes such a difference yeah. when they actually work, honestly. Um, obviously handy for my Instagram addiction. Yes, if you're not you're following me, I'm under the handle at Becca Charlton underscore Insta. Oh, That's good. That's Becca I, Charlton I, underscore Insta. Are you done plugging? Right. <laughs> I, personally, I more often than not ha end up having to like take off my gloves uh, before I get locked out of my phone for 16 hours. Anyway, that's enough about gloves. <laughs> oh, no, it isn't. <laughs> Is this, a, is this a pantomime? What is this today? Uh, no, but we do have some winter glove buying advice for you. Here's, well, you, Liam. Yeah. Here's one you made earlier. Thank you to Becca and the studio version of me certainly looks a lot warmer there than it is here. Anyway, so winter gloves. The choice is, well, mind-boggling really. You've got loads of options and you've got loads of different prices. So what should you get? Well, the first thing that you need to do is consider that the winter you're going to be tackling. That can change between different people. So the winter for me is going to be very different to a Canadian's winter. They have proper winters um, we just like to complain here on days like today when it really gets down to the one two three degrees then I go for something like this with a lot more insulation um, really I want something that's going to be at least water resistant if not waterproof 
Windproofing is big for me as well because that does the majority of keeping you warm. And then finally, I also like to think about the palm as well because you can get ones with padding, but personally, I find it simpler just to have them plain. So once you've decided which kind of gloves are gonna be for you, then fit is another really important aspect to consider. The benefit of thinner gloves is that they offer more dexterity. So they generally fit closer to your hands and that makes them a bit more comfortable generally to wear, but it also means that your hands are gonna feel more like normal. Now, personally, I don't love wearing gloves, so I try to get away with going bare hands for most of my riding, but there will come a temperature when I need gloves and I will always go for the thinnest option that I can get away with, just because it feels more like my natural hands. Once you've got really nice and toasty hands, I don't think you're gonna wanna take your gloves off. So if you've got a smartphone, here's one I made earlier, then you're gonna want ones with a decent touch sensitive thumb so that you can operate a smartphone with it. Most manufacturers advertise their gloves as having these thumbs. Not all of them work, so definitely check out the reviews on the site if you're interested in a specific pair of gloves. And with that said, you'll probably end up with a huge variety of gloves in your wardrobe that will cover you for all conditions. Now, while that is good to have, it can be very costly. So my top tip is to go for a glove system. The best I've found so far is Descent's 133 glove set. They're about 100 quid for the whole set, but it covers you with four different pairs of gloves that you layer together and combine depending on the conditions. Personally, I think it's a really good system um, and I haven't really found another system like it. But if you're looking for your first set of gloves, then I would get something mid-weight, windproof, and a little bit water resistant. That's gonna give you the best of everything. And from there, you can build out your glove options. And in true Blue Peter style, I'm back in the room. Uh, if there's one bit of kit worth you doing your research on, then it is gloves. Uh, they make or break about six months worth of rides, I'd say, um, yeah. And if you don't, then you might literally not be able to break. No one wants yeah, that. I know, that's horrible. Um, let's move on before we think about anything more to talk about about gloves. Uh, the Glibier Tourmalet 3 jacket. Well, first up, it's waterproof, so that's yeah. a great thing. Secondly, it's cheaper than lots of the alternatives. And thirdly, it's got a tailored fit, so it does not look like you're wearing a bin bag. I mean, that sounds like a, a win, win, win situation. Um, it also packs down really small. So if the weather does ever brighten up, then it can be really easily stuffed into most jersey pockets. Right, they're nearly there. Three to go. Next up, we have Continental's new GP5000 TR tyres, which are a direct replacement for the GP5000 TL. So those older TL tyres seem to be released before the tubeless market had really decided what it was up to, and hence, they had a few limitations. These new ones have ditched the butyl liner and hence saved 50 gram per tire. That's in a 25 mil size, so perhaps they might see, save even more weight in a larger size. These really are an all-round high-performing tyre. They were obviously quick enough for Philippe Ghana to win the World TT title on, and the sidewalls have also been bolstered up, which was a bit of a weakness with the old ones, wasn't it? Yeah, they didn't cope so well in Paris-Roubaix, but you know. Uh, the same grippy compound formula has been kept, making this a great choice for racing and fast training, but you will have to be pretty on it to find these in the size you want as they sell out so quickly. Heading back to commuting for the final time, we've had this Van Moof S3 in for test, and it's seriously impressed. Van Moof set out not just to make a bike, but a viable transport alternative, and we think they've done a pretty great job, actually. Yeah, so George, who tested this bike, dubbed it as the hardest bike to steal ever, with its built-in kickstand lock preventing the rear wheel from moving. It's got a loud built-in alarm, and it's got tracking via Apple's Find My app. And there's an in-house team who promise to track down and return your stolen bike within two weeks or they'll send you a new one. 
I think we could do with that full bikes, yeah. really. Um, yeah. It's got loads of other integrated features as well. Those rather odd tube shapes contain front and rear lights, an LED screen on the top tube, and the ability to pair it to an app, and of course, a motor. I have to say the S3 is a great way of making everyday travel easy and it feels like a real leap forward in mm. kind of getting most people out of their cars for just some journeys. Not all of them, just some. It does, it really does. And sticking with electrical things, I know that you've had fun recently out testing the new Dura Race group set. Oh yes, I've felt very lucky to get my grubby little hands on uh, this one. And going abroad with it was kind of just a cherry on the top, really. Uh, so the new generation has been long awaited and it's finally made the leap to 12 speed. You can check out our full review uh, via the link in the description below. But this is our product of the month. Is it drum roll time? Yeah, bit bit past it, but <laughs> there you go. Uh, spoiler alert, it didn't disappoint. It's like Dura Ace DI2 always has been, really. Mm. Absolutely brilliant, very expensive. <laughs> But if you're looking at it, you probably don't really concern yourself with the price. You In know I'm a fan. Always have been. Oh, me too. Interestingly, I saw that um, the first kind of boxed up set came into the UK and they sold out like that. Yeah. If, if you were lucky enough to get your hands on some, fair play. Well, if you like this video and found it useful, give us a like and subscribe to the channel as it really helps us. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Becca, back next month? Yeah, see you next month. Cool.